How can we design and implement programs that reduce poverty? How can we build the resilience of the poorest households in the world? How can we forecast the types and level of assistance in an emergency to enable the earliest possible response? These are some of the questions that face decision makers in the developing world. Household Economy Analysis, or HEA, can provide evidence-based answers to these and many other questions. HEA was first developed in the 1990s. Since then, it has been used by UN agencies, NGOs, governments, donors and private companies in almost 70 countries to inform a wide range of decisions. HEA develops a quantitative picture of all economic interactions within a household over a full 12-month period. We focus on the household because most people live within this coherent economic unit. Households are part of a local livelihood system which is connected to the wider world through a web of economic interactions. HEA forecasts how different shocks and external interventions will affect households. For example, it can determine whether households can manage on their own after a shock or if they will need additional help. So how does HEA work? We start by dividing areas into distinct geographic zones within which people live in more or less the same way. In this example, households along the river have a different means of production and different market interactions from those inland, where the soils are poor and rainfall is erratic. The production and market system is again different in the hills, where rainfall is higher and soils more fertile. We call these different areas livelihood zones and we do field work in each separately. Let's look at the Riverine Livelihood Zone. Households here depend on farming rice and vegetables, raising livestock and working as labourers. Within each village, households differ in wealth and social status. So the next step in HEA is to work with community leaders to divide households into separate groups, ranging from very poor to better off. We then interview representatives from each wealth group in at least eight villages to produce a full economic picture for a typical household in each wealth group. All food and cash sources are quantified and the economic links between wealth groups are mapped out. In this example, better off households own land, livestock and boats. They produce most of the food they eat and buy the remainder from the market. They earn money from selling crops, livestock and fish. Poor households have less land, fewer livestock and no boats. So they produce less of their own food and have to buy more from the market. To earn cash, they sell crops and livestock, but most of their money comes from working for wealthier households within the village. One household member also migrates for work to a distant capital. By developing a seasonal calendar, we can see when in the year these activities are done. Households in different wealth groups also spend their money in different ways. Understanding these expenditure patterns can help decision makers tailor cash transfer programs to meet their needs. HEA includes rigorous cross-checks within each interview and during analysis to ensure that the information is accurate. Expenditure and income must roughly balance. And food is converted into calorie equivalents which allows you to add up household food over the year and compare it to the international reference point of 2,100 kilocalories per person per day. We triangulate all information collected at the village level with secondary data and with data from the markets and key informants. The analytical power of HEA is that it allows us to predict how households will be affected by different shocks. This sets the stage for an effective early response. Let's return to the Riverine area to see how this works. In this example of a drought, poor households lose 50% of their crop. To cope, households reduce their expenditure on non-essential items and increase their income from labour migration. After taking into account these coping strategies, we can see whether the household faces a deficit by comparing their remaining income to a locally relevant threshold. We can calculate the deficit in food or in cash terms and use a seasonal calendar to show when in the year it will occur. 
Better off households have absolute losses that are larger, but because they produce a surplus to begin with, they do not have a deficit. HEA can model the effects of different scenarios, for example different severities of drought, floods, a market closure, a price shock, a conflict, or even a combination of these. This means we don't have to wait until a disaster happens to predict what the deficit will be. HEA modelling isn't limited to negative scenarios. Different types of programme interventions can be modelled too. This means we can predict which programme will have the most positive economic impact on households and show any negative unintended consequences before the programme has started. And we can compare the estimated net income to any number of thresholds. What's more, this modelling can be done for multiple years showing how a typical 5-10 to 10 year period of shocks and programme interventions will either build or undermine the resilience of households in the long term. HEA thus helps us to understand how households make ends meet and can be customised to inform a range of decisions critical to humanitarian and development planning. HEA, linking the reality of poor households to better decision making.